RNA polymerase enzymes are required to carry out the process of transcription and are found in all cells ranging from bacteria to humans. All RNA polymerases are multi-subunit assemblies with bacteria having five core subunits that have homologs in archaeal and eukaryotic RNA polymerase enzymes. In this section, we will learn more details about this enzyme class. Transcription takes place in several stages. To start with, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme locates and binds to the promoter. At this stage, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme is in the closed conformation. Transcription takes place in several stages. To start with, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme locates and binds to the template DNA at the primer. At this stage, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme is in the closed conformation. Initial specific binding to the promoters by sigma factors sets in motion conformational changes in which the RNA polymerase molecular machine bends and wraps the DNA with mobile regions of RNA polymerase playing key roles. Next, the RNA polymerase separates the two strands of DNA and exposes a portion of the template strand. At this point, the DNA and the holoenzyme are said to be in an open promoter complex. This is known as the transcription bubble. The RNA catalytic core within bacteria contains five major subunits, two alpha domains, two beta domains, and one omega domain that cannot be seen. To position this catalytic core onto the correct promoter requires the association of an additional domain called the sigma factor. Within bacteria, there are multiple different sigma factors that can associate with the catalytic core of the RNA polymerase that help to direct the catalytic core to the correct DNA locations. For example, within E. coli, sigma 70 is the housekeeping sigma factor that's responsible for transcribing most genes in growing cells. It keeps essential genes and pathways operating. Other sigma factors are activated during certain environmental situations, such as sigma 38, which is activated during starvation or when cells reach the stationary phase. When the sigma subunit associates with the RNA polymerase catalytic core, the RNA polymerase has formed the holoenzyme. When bound to DNA, the holoenzyme conformation of RNA polymerase can initiate transcription. Once the transcription bubble has formed, the sigma subunits dissociate from the complex and the RNA polymerase catalytic subunit continues elongation on its own. In eukaryotic cells, three RNA polymerases share the task of transcription. The first step in gene expression, RNA polymerase 1 is responsible for the synthesis of the majority of ribosomal transcripts, whereas RNA polymerase 3 produces short structured RNAs 
such as transfer RNAs and the 5S ribosomal RNA. RNA polymerase II produces all messenger RNAs and most regulatory and untranslated RNAs. The three eukaryotic RNA polymerases contain homologs to the five core subunits found in prokaryotic RNA polymerases. In addition, the eukaryotic polymerase I, II, and three enzymes have five additional subunits forming a catalytic core that contains 10 subunits. The core has a characteristic crab claw shape, which encloses a central cleft that harbors the DNA. It has two channels, one for the substrate NTPs and the other for the RNA product. Two pinchers called the clamp and the jaw stabilize the DNA in the downstream end and allow opening and closing of the cleft. For transcription to occur, the enzyme has to maintain a transcriptional bubble with separated DNA strands that facilitate the addition of the nucleotides. The RNA polymerase must also translocate along the template and stabilize the DNA and RNA hybrid and then finally allow the DNA to reanneal. This is achieved by a number of conserved elements in the active site, which include a forked loop, a rudder, a wall, a trigger loop, and the bridge helix. Here you can see a comparison of all three RNA polymerase enzymes from eukaryotes. They're all ancestrally related and share a similar core complex shown in gray and tan regions on this diagram. The stalk region is also a related structure in all of the polymerases. The pole 1 and pole 3 enzymes have more subunits than the pole 2 enzyme. The polymerase 1 and polymerase 3 enzymes have more limited arrays of transcripts that they create and tend to permanently incorporate transcription factors into their core structure. RNA polymerase II, however, has a much more diverse array of targets and therefore has a wide array of transcription factors that it needs to bind with. Therefore, they are not permanently incorporated, giving a smaller polymerase structure. In the next section, we will focus on the activity of RNA polymerase II.